Good evening, everybody. Thank you for turning up. Um, this training will be held in English. Tapi kalau siapa-siapa yang mau bertanya dalam bahasa Melayu, boleh bertanya dalam bahasa Melayu. Silakan. Okay, jangan malu. So, <coughs> uh, this training is actually two parts. There's the polling agents training and there's the counting agents training. The counting agents training will be quite short. It will be just about half an hour. The polling agent will take about two hours. I'm going to run all the way through without a break. Okay? So, if you need a break, just... Just pop up if you need to. Uh, no problems about it. I mean, this is all online. Your laptops can be brought along into toilet or wherever it is, so it's easy. Um, if you got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask immediately. Okay? Uh, don't wait until the end of it. Don't be shy. Just ask. Okay? And you'll be quite sure that some other people may also be thinking about the same questions. Uh, it's important to ask because some of the things um builds on to uh, what I would have mentioned previously. So you need to understand that fully before you can go on to the next one. So um, no issues uh, about that. If you're going to be breaking me up, don't worry about um, intervening and so on. Just ask, okay? Now, uh, from what I can hear, there was only one girl who has been a pacha before. Uh, am I correct? I've been a bachelor before uh, at the previous election as well. Okay. And count, counting agent as well. As a GE, at the GE or at PRN Johor? Uh, last election, GE. GE, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one, the girl who was there, uh, was it a GE or PRN? Uh, yes, during PRN Johor. PRN Johor, okay, fine. So you two have attended training, have uh, you, either of you or anyone else attended any of my training? I don't recall. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so nobody has attended my training. Huh? Okay, so this is going to be, um, it will take run for two and a half hours. I do have a separate training for people who are, who wants to be station masters. I will have a separate training for people who wants to be coordinators. Those are more in depth. Um, Different. I wouldn't want to say more in depth. Um, you don't need to be a pacha to be a coordinator, for example. Okay, um, different skill sets and station master is a different skill set. So I'll, uh, if anybody is interested, then you just, just raise it up and uh, and I'll be quite happy to talk to you. All right. Now, all the slides that I have here are in my website jimkong.com jimkong j i m k h o n g dot com you go over to the malaysia page all right because that is that contains everything else that i have including my professional site um but you can just go you can look through the whole website you're welcome to look through the whole website or you can just go straight to the malaysia page and the malaysia page will contain all my pacha work as well as um uh, I've um, started off a series on um, uh, Malaysian history, okay, the bits that was never explained in history books. And I hope, you know, people will find it interesting and I'm on the 10th article so far, hoping to release one article a month and eventually be serialized. So that's my commercial break plug for a minute. Okay, now, um, I will just run through okay hopefully we finish by 10 30 and uh anything just ask okay right what we'll cover today was a polling agent what happens before election day what happened on election day but before the election starts the polling procedures and what happens on election day after the the, the polling process okay what's um what's a polling agent first of all this is a candidate's team on the top left-hand corner, you see the candidate, okay? That's the most important person. If there's no candidate, there's no election. Next to him or her would be the campaign manager. These are the people who's going to help to build the campaign, and this is the, shall I say, the more sexy parts of, uh, of, of, of the election where people see the campaigning that goes on. We doing Pacha is really the back room, okay? And in the back room, 
the guy who hates the whole thing is called the election agent. Now, the election agent is a very important fellow. Okay, the election agent and the candidate are the only persons who are named on nomination day. Those are the only two names that submitted to SPR on nomination day, and so SPR officially can say, "I will only talk to these two persons." But of course, most of the time they know that the candidate is busy during the campaign period, so they will talk to the election agent. So the election agent is the only person that's mandated to represent the candidate to the SPR. Okay, so um, if there's any forms or anything like that, this is the guy who's going to submit it. Okay, his signature, as far as the election is concerned, his signature is as good as a candidate's. Okay, now on. Um, on election day, it's a very important point. The candidate and the election agent can walk into any polling room that they want without asking for prior permission. Okay, so it's a very very powerful position. The election agent is going to be a very busy person because he is going to deal with everything to do with the SPR with regards to the election. Okay, the um, the um, election. Uh, so, it will not just be about Pachas alone. Anything like your your banner your, is in the wrong place, your charama went on very late at night and was making too much noise, all those sort of things election agent have to handle. Okay? So, basically, he's the one who has got to jagai, jaga kadai for everything. Helping the election agent is a Pacha coordinator. This guy is not mandated by the SPR, so his name is not there with the SPR. He does all the paperwork, all the administration, and so on. Okay? Now, this is a constituency. The constituency, we've got two types. P and N. N parliamentary and state. Okay? And agree. The one parliamentary constituency will include two or more constituency. Okay, normally it is two, three, or sometimes four constituencies in some states. Uh, only in Perlis do you get seven constituencies because Perlis is so little tiny state. So they only got three parliamentary constituencies. So times seven, then makes it 21 uh, uh, dunes, what we call dunes, day one undangan degree uh, seats. Okay, now the states constituency will always exist within the parliamentary uh, um, constituency. So the state constituency boundaries and the parliamentary constituency boundaries will always be the same. So you cannot have a state constituency that is partly in one parliamentary constituency and partly in another constituency. No. The whole of the state constituency is always within the same parliamentary constituency. Okay? So then, within the constituency, is broken down to the polling district, Daira Mangundi. Daira Mangundi is for administration purposes only. On election day, we don't bother with Daira Mangundi. On election day, we have Pusat Mangundi. That's the polling center. Pusat Mangundi is like the school. Okay, um, The school is where you go to for the election. If you're in a rural area, then they may not even have a school. They may just have... Um, Balai Raya, small little um, day one in, in a kampong. Okay. Within the school, there are classrooms. And in the classrooms, each classroom is a Salora Mangundi. This is where the polling actually takes, takes place. Okay. So you go to a Pusat Mangundi to vote in a Salora Mangundi. Okay. Very important points here. Okay, who's who on election day? On the right-hand side, that is the SPR team. On the left-hand side, that's our team. Let's start with the SPR team. At the constituency level, there's this guy called the RO, returning officer. He's the boss of the all the SPR in that constituency. <clears throat> He's the one who runs the whole election in that constituency. Okay, so if there is uh, like the PRN, then you've got... Um, Every is very simple. Then every constituency, all fifty-six, um, headed by an RO. But if you got a general election where you got both P and N happening at the same time, then 
you may have one returning officer for the parliamentary being assisted by two or three or four ARO, assistant ROs, one taking care of one um, state constituency. Okay, so this guy is is supposed to run the entire election. So it's not just about the day of the election itself, from the nomination day all the way to gazetting, he's the one in charge. Okay, now at a Saloran level, you have got a Ketua Tempat Mengundu, the KTM. Okay, so this guy is the boss of everything that happens in that room that day. Anyone who set foot into that room comes under the direction of the KTM. And that includes the voter, that includes you as a pacha, that includes a police officer, that includes even the guy who comes in to take photographs, you know, the journalist who comes in to take the photographs. Anybody who steps inside the room has to take instructions from the KTM. He's the boss there, all right? The KTMs all report directly to the RO. So if there's a hundred salarans in that constituency, then a hundred KTMs report directly to the RO. But the KTM in Saloran number one is normally the more most um, uh, uh, experienced uh, KTM, and KTM number one uh, will play a coordinating role. So he'll provide guidance to the other KTMs. If they got any queries, they can always refer to him. Okay, but they don't report to him; they report directly to the RO. On the left hand side, on our team, we have our team is headed by the election agent, assisted by a pacha coordinator. Now, at the polling center, that's a very important person that we have. Unlike the KTM number one, this person actually runs the entire team at the station. Okay, so we call him the station master. So sometimes he's called captain, sometimes he's called uh, kota pacha, but generally, most places, especially the English. In English, we, we always say uh, uh, station master. Okay, um, so everybody has to take instructions. Everybody within the team who goes into the Saloran has to take instructions from the Ketua Pacha, that's the station master. So you got Pacha, Pa and Cha, polling agent and counting agent. You are inside the Saloran. Now you see the word Ba as well. That is a Barung agent, which generally... I would only have only if I have um, only if I have uh, um, spare people. Okay, so I don't expect Muda to have any spare people on election day. So I don't expect uh, Muda to feel any ba. You only be pa and you only be cha. Okay, so the state. So you are in the room. You are really cut off from the rest of the world, especially during counting time your only connection with the rest of the world would be through the station master. So that is why you have to take instruction station master. Only the station master knows what is going on outside. Okay. Um, so you just follow what the station master tells, tells you. So what's a polling agent? First of all, the polling agent is an agent of the candidate. Now it's a very important point. First of all, you're an agent in Agency law, if any of you have studied any bit of law, in agency law, basic principle is that the act of the agent is the act of the principle. Okay? So, the agent, whatever the agent does, is the act of the principle. Whatever you do in a room, whatever you say, is what is done or said by the candidate. Okay? So, if you were to Banta, then is a candidate who banta. If you accept, is a candidate who accept. If you sign, is a candidate who sign. Very important point. You got to bear that in mind. Okay. Number two, you are an agent of the candidate, so your loyalty is to the candidate. The candidate or the election agent representing the candidate is the one who signs your form to say that you can be in the room. So you are in the room because of the candidate. Okay, and basically under agency law, the loyalty of the agent is to the candidate and so the, can, the agent would only have the interest of the candidate at heart. So what's the interest of the candidate? Is to win the election, right? 
So you as an agent, your job is to help the candidate win the election. That's it. You're not an independent person, okay? You're not like SPR that's supposed to be independent. SPR and the other parties will look at you and when they look at you, they will only see a candidate, okay? And I'm making this a very important point because there are people who go around training Pacha saying that uh, as a Pacha, you report to the Rakyat Malaysia, which is pure rubbish. So if you sign up to represent a candidate, you have to take instructions from the candidate. You're not independent of the candidate. If you don't like the, can uh, the candidate's instructions as given to you, then your option is to withdraw. And it's better that you withdraw because to me, it is very unethical if you were to sign up to act for a candidate and then say, I reserve the right to make my own decision what I want to do. Okay, that I think is very wrong and very unethical. Second point, you observe the polling process. And it's a very important thing. You observe the polling process. You're not part of the polling process. You are only observing so you cannot stop the polling process. You are not part of the polling process. You cannot make it happen. And if you're absent, the polling process will not, will not stop. It will just ignore your absence and just continue on as if, you know, you don't matter. And which is really the point, okay? You are there to observe, okay? You cannot do anything. You cannot veto. You got no powers of veto. You cannot stop anything. You, your job is to sit down and record things down, okay? If there are things that is wrong that is happening, you can try to bring it up, but if they decide to go ahead with it, you cannot stop it, all right? You observe it and you note it down and you inform as quickly as possible, okay? So you're not, you're not the... The, the like the someone who is going to be policing the, the polling process. You're not. You're not the auditor. Okay? Um, so it's a very important point. Always remember that you, if you become too much of a nuisance, the KTM has a right to throw you out. Okay? And they have done that before. The third point, subject to the election law, what's the election law? I will explain it to you as I come along. Okay? Now, who can be a, Malays uh, a polling agent? First of all, Malaysian citizen with a my card. 21 years and above. Now, here, I'm sorry. Um, yes, at 18, you can vote. But the laws regulating polling agents and pachas is separate from the Undi Lapamblas law. Okay? So, that is by laws that SPR is supposed to put it up to parliament. And I'm not aware that they have put it up to parliament yet. Okay? So... Um, so hopefully they put it to parliament and that will be changed before the GE. So that's how you get a situation at the last PRN Johor, 18 years old can vote but cannot be Pacha, which actually didn't make sense. Okay. They're not charged in court for any criminal offence for the last five years, not a discharged uh, prisoner within the last five years, not registered under Prevention of Crimes Act, not an undischarged bankrupt. These are the same... Um, qualifications and disqualification that would be that will apply to a candidate okay so important thing is that it's about criminal offense so that means to say traffic offense if you have been pulled up to court you know to answer for a traffic offense that is that is not a hindrance because a traffic offense is not a criminal offense okay so before election day the first, there are two forms. This first form is a white form, white color form. You don't need to fill it in, right? But this is the form that is the Surat Plantekan, very important because this is the one that a candidate or election agent signs in order to appoint you to be the agent. So if you are, if you don't have this form, nobody will recognize you as an agent, okay? To get this form, you need to submit your copy of the my card, both sides. So here we accept um, a photograph. Okay, so you can just take a very simple photograph with your phone. Passport size photo. Okay, passport size photo. This one is required for um, 
um, to put it onto the the SPR tag. Okay, so it is always a good idea that you have got passport size photographs in your wallet whenever you need it. So I I always have that. Um, I would always suggest that you have that. But for the purposes of Pacha, if you don't have passport size photograph, um, you can submit a soft copy and we will have to cut it out, okay, and, and fit it in. Now, if you submit a passport size photographs, um, please write your name and IC number at the back because during election time, the Bilek Rakan is very, very confused, very, very kalam kabot. So, you know, um, these cards all get get separated from the form very easily. So <clears throat> please write your name and IC number so that it's easy to find. You need to submit one for each role. So if you were to be pa and cha, you need two photographs. Okay? And you need to have two of these white forms. Okay? Because as you can see on the white form, it says, it actually says, agent tempat mengundi or agent mengira undi. So you got to get the right form whether you're pa or cha or not. This is the form that you sign. This is a pink form. Okay? So it is a form A, Surat Sumpah Kerasiaan. And this is signed and countersigned by the RO. Every single red form will contain two signatures, your signature and the RO signature. Now, it's a very important form because it says that when you sign it, you say that you're complying with Election Offences Act Section 5. Now, this is the one and only time that I will mention a section number. Why? Because you're signing this form. You sign this form and you better know what Section 5 is all about. Okay? Basic principle about signing things is that you better know what you're signing. So, what exactly are you signing when you sign this form? Let's look at Section 5. Okay? There are four provisions there. First of all, it says you cannot try to find out the candidate for whom the voter has or has is intending to vote for. Basic principle of election law in Malaysia, your vote is secret. Your vote is secret that no one else can even try to find out. Okay? So, no one can find out who you voted for. And if you look at the wording, it says cannot try to find out. Which means to say ask also cannot. So, under Malaysian law, the policeman cannot ask you who you voted for. The asking itself is already an offence. Okay? Very important point. Second thing, cannot communicate any details regarding name and voting number of any voter before polling closes. Now, what it means here is that not just your vote is secret, whether you voted or not voted, that also is secret, okay? So, on election day, you have got no, no interest in voting. I'm not suggesting that you do that, but if you've got no interest in voting and you just want to sit at home and binge watch um, a Game of Thrones the whole day, well, you can, okay? And I'm sure you're not going to be too happy uh, if some knocked on asking you why you didn't vote. Nobody is allowed to know whether you voted or not voted, okay? So you're, if you're in a room, you cannot tell anybody outside the room who has come to vote and who has not come to vote, okay? Cannot communicate with a voter between the receipt of the ballot paper and inserting the ballot box. So between the time that a voter received the ballot paper and until he puts it into the ballot box, no one is allowed to talk to the voter, okay? The principle here is that the voter must be free to cast his ballot, <clears throat> cross his ballot paper and cast the ballot, okay, in quiet and in peace without being influenced by anybody, All right? The only person allowed to talk to the voter is a KTM because obviously, you know, if the voter got any questions, he must be able to talk to somebody. And so he talks to the KTM. So the principle also in a room is that everybody talks to everyone else through the KTM. The fourth one is cannot communicate the polling stream stamp, the Saloran stamp. That one I'll explain to you what a Saloran stamp is later. Okay, so this pink form, there's only one form. Okay, and you only sign one. Whether you're pa or cha, you only sign, or you're both, 
you only sign one form. Now, anyone who steps foot into the room has to sign this form. And that includes the KTM, that includes um, the, the, the candidate and so on, already signed theirs, uh, special form. Uh, this includes the, um, the policeman. This includes the, um, all the pachas. This includes the um, journalist who comes to take photographs. If you don't sign this form, you're not allowed into the room, okay, on official duty. So it's very strict about it. Anyone who's inside this room has to take this oath. So as you can see, all right, as you can see, Malaysian election law is very strict. It's very strict and very tight, okay? The problem is not the law. The problem is the implementation of the law. And I'll explain to you as we go along. So after registration, you'll be called to attend Pacha training, you know, which you would have done by now. Okay, you'll be assigned to a polling center. So you can always volunteer to say, uh, when you volunteer, you can always say, uh, can I be stationed in this particular polling station because that's where I'm going to be voting. Yes, you can ask for it. Um, you can also ask, can I be be um, on duty in the afternoon because in the morning I'm taking my parents out to vote. You can always request, you know, but sometimes because of the, um, uh, if there's not enough people, they, they may not be able to entertain your request, okay? Your station master will call you, will brief you. Um, you may meet as a team before election day, okay? And normally there'll be a WhatsApp group that's set up, okay? On the eve of election day, follow the dress code, okay? Prepare the my card. Without a my card, no one knows who you are. Handphone should be charged as sufficient credit. Okay, so if you're prepaid, make sure that you got enough credits, uh, that you got enough uh, data plan. Very important. You must have a data plan. You, you can bring along a power bank. You can bring along a small bag. Women have got handbags. Nowadays, men also carry handbags. So you can bring along a power bank. Not a problem. Just don't make sure that you don't bring along that huge backpack that you go for camping or whatever it is. Just a small backpack will be fine. Okay. A small torchlight. Now, you know what a torchlight is for, right? Everyone knows, okay? Um, has it happened before? Blackouts on election day? Yes, it has. But it has not been as often as the stories that goes around. It has not, as far as I'm aware, um, happened in the last few elections in Peninsula. This is something that only happens on Sabah and Sarawak, okay? But if it does happen, I can assure you, you need a torchlight. Your handphone light is not going to be enough. Not that your handphone light is not bright. Your handphone light is quite bright. But it's not wide enough. Okay? It is a bit too focused on it. It's a bit too narrow. Now, notice I say a small torchlight. Okay? Why a small torchlight? Well, if you start to bring along one of those big, huge flashing torchlight, which you then have to put on the floor, okay, when you come into the room, you're sending a message to the KTM. You're saying, I don't trust you. And that's not a very good start to the relationship between you and a KTM. Okay? So bring along a small torchlight, put it into the backpack discreetly and put it away. Additional passport size photograph. Yes, bring it along just in case, you know, uh, passport size photographs get lost. Spare pens, pencil and all those sort of things. All those sort of things will be provided to you. Uh, you just bring along if you got any favorite one that you got any superstitions about, whatever. Your lucky pen or whatever it is. Make sure that you got adequate sleep. Now, it's especially in your first shift, you have to be there at the polling center by 6. If I'm the station master, I'll ask you to be there by 6.45, okay? You could be there the whole day. And uh, especially if you're going to be the counting agent as well. If you're going to be a counting agent as well, if you're going to be both Pa and Cha, it's quite likely that you'll be um, scheduled to be in as Pa number one, first shift in the morning, and then come back in the evening to become counting agent. Okay? And you take a rest in between. If, you, if there's not enough people and you are the only Pacha for that salon run, then you may have to pop up on the room and just have a two-hour break. Okay, 
So you must make sure that you got adequate sleep. All right. Make sure that you're well rested the day before. Okay. And um, the thing about pacha work is that um, the work that requires you the most attention and the most critical will be towards the end. Okay, which is accounting agent job. So if you are tired already, you will be the most tired when you need to be the most alert. Okay, so please make sure that you have got adequate sleep. I cannot emphasize this uh, enough. On the night before election, there will be a big charama and they will run until 12 o'clock midnight because the law in Malaysia is that at 12 o'clock midnight on the day before election, all campaigning has to stop. So, if you want to go for that uh, charama, go for the charama, but make sure that you go home early to get your sleep. All right? Next, your pacha dress code. Smart casual. Remember that you're on official duty. Okay? So, please dress properly. All right? I keep getting questions. Can I wear this? Can I wear that? Can I wear this? Can I wear that? Well, I'm just asking for one day in five years that you dress up nicely. All right? So it's not to say that there is a very strict dress code about in, in the Pacha. There is no, there's no hard and fast rule about it. But you are subject to the directions of the directives of the, of the KTM. And so be conservative about it. You know, don't tempt fate with the KTM. Okay, so just dress up conservatively so that you don't give the guy a chance to, to throw you out or to be upset with you. Okay, so just dress up nicely. All right, dress up comfortably. It can get pretty hot in the room. All right, remember a lot of these are the classroom that is no air con, it just has a fan. Okay, so dress up nice, uh, light colored um, cotton if possible. Okay, try to avoid round neck t-shirts. Okay, collar t-shirts are permitted. Uh, like I said, it is not a hard and fast rule. It's not to say that every round neck t-shirt will be kicked out. It all depends on the KTM. But one thing that is absolutely certain is no political logos or colors. No political logos. So your Muda t-shirt is out, your Berse t-shirt is out. Okay, anything that says anything about, you know, uh, the disappearance of Pastor Ko, you know, the the uh, uh, one MDB or whatever this is, all political statements, no wearing of it. Okay? Uh, colors. There has been KTMs, it's rare, but there have been KTMs who treat certain colors as, as um, political statements. So red is out because it's DAP, black is out because it's Muda, yellow is out because it's Berse, and so on and so forth. All right. So if you're in doubt, just bring along something spare, <coughs> a spare shirt, okay, neutral color, white is always the best, with no wordings, put it into your backpack, okay. No sleeveless t-shirts, please to top aurat, no shorts or miniskirt, no sandals or slippers. Okay, um, reporting for duty on the election day. So you will meet your station master at a designated time at the Pondok Panas. Now, uh, Pondok Panas is not a must, it's not a Pondok, it is basically just a table and chair under a big umbrella. That's basically all, all it is. So, but that will be the designated place for Muda. So it will, it may even carry the Muda logo, all right? Um, so people that is where the muda people will, will will gather okay so if you do have a pond of panas then you meet at the pond of panas okay if you are not the first um uh pacha then your pacha kit is ready for the previous pacha otherwise you'll be given the, uh, the 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 pacha kit if you have not yet signed a red form i know occasionally that may happen you may have to sign it before you go in you will get the white form that is already signed by the candidate or the EA. So you get two forms and the SPR tag. Okay, so you make sure you glue the right photo to the right tag. The tags are all color coded. So different color for pa, different color for cha, different color for bar. So you make sure that you got the right tag. 
the tag enables you to enter the school. Okay? So because there's a policeman there, and the policeman will only allow people to go in at 8 o'clock. So if you're going to go in before 8 o'clock, you need to show the tag. If you are going to go in after 5 o'clock, you need to show the tag. Okay? The pacha kit. Every pacha kit is labeled with a Saloran number. Okay, so you check the, the, the Saloran number. Every pacha kit is unique in that sense. So every pacha kit will contain the electro roll. Electro roll for that Saloran only. All right, so that is why the pacha kit is always labeled for the Saloran. You have got sample, sa sample forms 13, 14, 7, 5, 3. I'll explain to you what they are. Sample of accepted and rejected ballots, I'll explain to you what they are. You got your stationery, permanent marker pen, very important. Paper clip, uh, empty paper is up to you. Calculator, normally we don't put calculators in there uh, because nowadays you got your calculators on a handphone. Three objection letters, surat bantah. Now, what are surat bantah? If something happens and you see something happens that you don't like, you put up your hands, very politely raise it with the KTM, and then the KTM will make a decision. Now, the KTM's decision is final. You've got no say over it. So if the KTM makes a decision that you don't like, you've got two options. A, you accept it. Okay? You can swallow it and accept it. And if you feel it is serious enough, you then text it over to your station master and let your station master know. Sometimes cases are just in isolation. But sometimes if many cases are happening, then it's no longer in iso isolation. There's a pattern emerging and the, the candidate and the EA may need to know. Okay? But if it's something really serious, like for instance, you know, the, the voter comes in with a finger already marked and he still gets a ballot paper. Then you can raise a surah bantahan. Okay. The surah bantahan, uh, normally I would always recommend uh, in a pacha kit to have three copies. Three copies with, um, with uh, normally it is two sets with uh, carbon paper. All right. So, so that you actually can uh, have a copy when because you need to write on it, okay? Because even though the Surat Bantahan is pre-printed, all right, with a lot of the details, the details of what exactly your Bantah about, you have to write it down yourself. So there's a carbon paper, then it, it you will get a copy. So you give the original to the KTM and you keep your copy, okay? Uh, of course, if you're allowed to take a photograph, then you take a photograph, okay? You, then you don't need the carbon paper, okay? Your... Uh, but bear in mind this, all right? When you banta, it is not you who banta. It is the candidate who banta. All right? So think very carefully whether it not, is this something serious that you need to put your objection down in writing. Okay? Um, some places uh, may also have checklists for pa and for cha. All these are in my website. Um, and relevant pages of the Act and the regulations so they can refer to it while you're in the room. Okay, so if you want it, you just request for it. Or you go to my website and you can download it. Okay, you enter a school. This is a typical polling center. You enter the school. Normally, the first thing that you enter, uh, you reach after you clear the, 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 the gates of the school will be the barong. The barung is quite often placed in a canteen, if the canteen is near the, the front gate. Otherwise, they will set up a booth, all right, with umbrella and, and so on. And in that barung, there will be two, uh, normally two um, SPR officers with a laptop and normally two police officers, okay? So you go in and you show your IC. And they will check on the on the laptop and they will tell you which salon to go to. Okay? So if you now you don't have to show your IC. You don't have to go through the barum as a voter. You can bypass the barum because if you're clever enough, you would have gone to the SPR website and you would have checked 
which polling center you are and which salon run you're in. So you would already have known your salon number. Or you could have been sent that flyer from, uh, from BN. You know, BN will send you a flyer with a sample of the, of the ballot paper and they will mark for you exactly where you're supposed to mark. And they will also put down what your uh, pusat mengundi and asaron mengundi is. Okay, so uh, you can see people walking in with the, the BN slip very often. Because not, not necessarily because they are BN supporter, because it contains the Sauron number. So if you already know your Sauron number, then you can bypass the barung, you can go straight up to the Sauron. All right. So that is why um, the barung agent is not necessary as far as I'm concerned. You know, uh, because the barung is not mandatory, you can just bypass the barung. Okay. So, you go to the salon run. In this example, you got six salon runs. One, two, three downstairs, four, five, six upstairs. There's a reason why one, two, three is, is, is downstairs. Because the um, uh, electoral roll is drawn up for the whole school, okay, for all the six salon runs. And it is always organized in the order of um, IC number. So, the if it follows the my card IC number, that means the oldest one is number one and the youngest one is number six. So that is why the older voters vote downstairs one, two, three, and you younger fellas will go upstairs. So if you are a first time voter, you will probably end up in Sarah number six. Okay. And then, then that is why every election you will night punk card one Sarah run. All right. The maximum number of voters per salon is 700. Okay. Um, 700 except for salon number one because there's a, all the old people are there. So they take a longer time to vote. So there's only 350 sal uh, uh, voters in that salon number one. Okay. Um, COVID, during COVID time, there was a change to reduce it to 600 voters per salon maximum or Sarawak number one, 300. So I don't know whether GE, they will still keep the voting, uh, the, the COVID rules or not. I suspect they will not, but they may be comfortable with uh, 600. I don't know. Maybe in Johor and Melaka, they will keep to 600 because they really, you know, uh, organize it that way. <coughs> okay, before polling starts, you enter the Sarawak at a point of time, uh, at 7.30 or any other time that's, that the KTM allows you. Um, there are KTMs who sometimes, the, I've come across KTMs who only let you in just before 8 o'clock. Okay, so it is, um, uh, it is not correct because even under the, uh, the, the, the SOP, the Pacha has got a role before 8 o'clock. Sometimes it's a bit too late la, to do anything about it, okay? But it's hard to tell what is actually happening because sometimes 7.30, 7.45, you know, the KTM is still at the Theta Rex store. All right, that happens, okay? <clears throat> so if you are PA1, then you have a Pacha kit with you. On entering the Saron, you greet the KTM politely. You show your my card. You show your red form. You show your white form. The SPR attack is for the police officer, okay? And... They're supposed to do a briefing to you and to the clerks. So sometimes some of them may do a short uh, one minute thing. Now, who's a KTM? The KTM is normally non-partisan. They are not members of political parties. They are, they are, and normally in my experience, they are actually not, not necessary supporters. Okay. So most of them are civil servants. Okay. And they are quite often teachers in that school. And you need to understand the psychology of dealing with the civil servants. First of all, in this case, all right, they are already called to work on the day off. So some of them may not be too happy already. Okay. They do get a special allowance, but that allowance is often not enough. All right. So they are, you know, um, not very keen. Sometimes they are very reluctant at work. Okay. And you need to understand the civil servants, all right. What is the objective of a civil servant every day when they come into work first thing in the morning? It's not to get a gaji, you know, because a gaji is really, you know, guaranteed. Okay. 
most of them just wants to go home early, all right? Their, their work is really, you know, their, their salary is very guaranteed. So it's a question of doing as little work as possible, all right? I hope none of you are civil servants. I'm not offending anybody, but that's generally the, 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 the reality. So if you're there, you just have to be careful. You don't give the impression that you're going to stop the KTM from going home early because then he doesn't like you. you got to help him show that you're helping him to go home early. So what you do is that you, you help him with his work. Okay. Now, a lot of these KTMs, they don't know the election law very well because they only attend training once every five years. And you know, when they attend training, they don't ask questions. Okay. And there's a reason why they don't ask questions because when you ask questions, you go home late. So you don't ask questions. So, so they don't know the election law very well. And it is very, very common to see a KTM on election day sitting down at his desk, reading through his uh, training materials. Okay. Uh, some of them are not civil servants. Some of them are volunteers from outside the government. Um, so they, they, those will be a bit smarter. Those will be a bit harder to push around. But uh, so these volunteers from outside the government, basically these are people from the private sector. I've had bank officers, bank managers, you know, who wants to play their role as um, in the democratic process of the country. And so they volunteer to be KTM. So you help but those if they need help you help them but you put it nicely you don't put it like you are the one who's not very clever i'm the one who knows the election law so let me tell you how it works no all right these guys have got a label of the ktm okay smart or not smart they have the power to throw you out of the room so don't annoy them so go up to them and say that uh KTM yang ini saya pun tidak begitu fase mungkin peraturan kata begini 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 okay so you put it nicely like you are discovering it with them and you let them feel that they are the smart ones okay then they will like you and if they like you then your job and their job that day will be a lot 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 easier all right I have a pacha I have had pachas who got to the point where the KTM wants to go to the toilet, they ask permission from the Pacha. So be nice, okay? Your KTM, I mentioned that they are normally non-partisan. They are normally not supporters of the any political parties. Generally, that is true. And generally, however, there's one exception. KTM number one, who's the most experienced KTM, is very often uh bn supporter because he's the one who guides all the other pachas he's the one who coordinates with everybody okay so use of handphone there is a possibility that um, spr may ban handphones from being used okay uh we have noticed from uh, ge 13 to g14 there was a slight change in the approach in GE 13, up to GE 13, it was very much a case of whatever that is not prohibited by the law is allowed. Now in GE 14, it was basically whatever that is not specifically allowed by law is prohibited. Okay. So the law was developed, the election law in Malaysia was developed in the fifties. In those days, there's no handphone. So the law is silent about whether handphones are allowed or not. So we will always have this question mark whether or not SPR will actually ban handphones or not. Hopefully the environment today is a bit more uh, permissive, okay, uh, after the 2018 elections, okay, and, uh, and, and they will not give too much trouble. So, but you may have individual KTMs, okay, who have got their own ideas. Now, some of them, it is actually in the SOP that phones are not allowed. But what it meant is you're not allowed to speak on a phone in the room. Okay. So if the KTM asks, says that you cannot use the phone, explain very nicely. 
tuan KTM saya tidak akan pakai untuk bercakap saya hanya pakai untuk teks okay put it nicely and four out of five times they will say yes if they still say no ask if you can keep the phone and you will use the phone outside the room okay so when you want to text you go outside the room and you text from outside okay there are i've come across ktms who actually say ini bakul kamu semua letak handphone dalam bakul balik saja boleh ambil okay and that that goes for all the crannies and all the pachas if that happens you try to hang on to it to your phone and you say saya matikan saya punya phone nah saya sudah matikan saya punya phone boleh saya simpan okay try and hang on to your phone as much as possible and then when you want to use it you go out to the toilet and you use it okay i don't think so there's cctv in the toilets anyway All right if you really really have to give it up then what you do is that before you give it up you give a call to your station master and let your station master know okay and um uh please don't fight with the ktm on this issue all right don't get thrown out of the room i'd rather have somebody i'd rather have a pacha in a room uh that cannot use a handphone than to have no pacha in the room okay are you guys okay so far are you guys following so far yeah all good okay yeah. good yeah. all right okay so now you're in a room all right first of all you check to make sure that the facilities allow voting to take place in secret so there is the windows or the long the corridor if the uh those windows where you have got um, the screens facing them okay you know open to them you make sure that those windows are closed okay the law as well as the ktm's sop also says that they're supposed to check for posters symbols or anything uh any pictures of political parties or any other candidates candidates would include the prime minister and the menteri besar okay so if you are uh uh and, and so the photographs of the prime minister and the menteri besar in the room has to be taken down okay because on election uh during election time when the, um when the uh day one has been dibubarkan has been dissolved there is no mp left if there's no mp that means there's no cabinet there's no prime minister okay so the prime minister's photograph has to be taken down the menteri besar's photograph has to be taken down but in theory if you do not have simultaneous let's say that they dissolve parliament but they did not they do not dissolve the johor assembly then the menteri besar of johor's photograph can still remain up there because he's not a candidate okay uh whatever you do okay never ask to take down the photograph of the king the agong or the sultan or the or, or or the governor okay right now check check the ktm and all the crani to make sure that they are not having any any lenchana any logo you know the the small badge or whatever it is on on their on their baju okay uh that you know support the party you position yourself well so you got to robot your table okay uh there will be properly speaking there will be as many tables as there are candidates sorry as yeah as many tables as there are candidates if both p and n is happening then you got you can end up with a lot of tables all right i still haven't found out what happened with that uh, the last ge there was one constituency in um, in sabah where they had i think eight um parliamentary candidates and uh, 10 uh state candidates so so you have to sit in a place where you can uh, see the three crannies the ballot box the two screens okay that's a very important one then you look at the electoral roll you check the electoral roll whether or not um your copy is the same as the ktm's copy it has happened before that we get a wrong electoral roll okay the right salo run but the wrong date the date will normally be the last one or two quarters before so if election is going to be held today today is end of august 
the last gazetted electoral roll would be on uh, 31st of March. The one for 30th of June wouldn't be gazetted yet until maybe next month. Okay, so you have to check that you got the right date. Check with the KTM whether or not you got the same copy. One KTM, saya ada lima ratus enam puluh empat pengundi, kamu ada berapa? Saya ada dua belas dua belas muka surat, kamu ada berapa? Okay, check the last number on one page and the first number on the next page and make sure that they're consecutive. Okay. Uh, check to make sure that the electoral roll is not marked. Uh, you may have an electoral roll where some names are already cancelled off. Okay? And there is a PP and PA written against it. PP and PA means pengundi post and pengundi awal, which means they already got a ballot paper. Okay? So they are not allowed to take another ballot paper on election day itself. All right. Um, before 8 a.m., check the ballot papers. So there, this is what the ballot papers, ballot books looks like. All right, they are like a book ticket. You know, it's like um, like a checkbook. <clears throat> there are supposed to be 50 in each book. So you check whether there are 50 or not in this book. You count. You get them counted. You are not allowed to touch the ballot paper. Right? There's a basic rule. You are not allowed to touch the ballot paper or any of the balloting equipment. Because if you can touch the ballot paper, that means a BN fellow also can touch the ballot paper and you do want that. So you ask them to count, okay? Uh, we, I was told there was one situation before that there were, there were 51 ballot papers on one book. There were two number 50s. Um, it happens, this sort of thing happens. So if the KTM doesn't want to count, then you say, Tuan KTM, uh, itu cadangan saya untuk kira kata sundi. Kalau tidak, mungkin ada ada masalah nanti. Okay, masalah is a magic word for civil servants. So you can use that. Check that they have, that all the ballot papers are clean. There's no been any marking. And then there's a serial number. There's a serial number on the counterfoil and on the ballot paper itself. Right? So you check the serial number if you can see it. You cannot touch, but you can always look uh, um, because the, the cranny will do it in front of you, okay? So the serial number is not meant to track the voter. I'll explain to you what a serial number is used for later on. Okay, this is a Form 13. Now, the principle of a Form 13 is this. Say at the beginning of the day, you start off with 600 ballot papers, okay? So that means 12 books. You count it and you know that you got 600. At the end of the day, when polling closes, you count how many you got left over, you only got 100 ballot papers. Which means to say that inside the ballot box, there can only be 500 ballot papers. You can have 500, you can have less, but you cannot have more than 500. Right? That's a principle. So when they open the ballot box at the counting, the first thing that they do is not to to separate into the to the to the candidates, they will count whether or not they got 500. 500, 499, okay. 501, not okay. So all these numbers are recorded in the Form 13. The Form 13, bargain A, is, um, is uh, filled in in the morning. And as you can see in this uh, example, that it will, they will list down all the serial numbers and that on this, Example, they start off with 500 ballot papers at the beginning of the day. Okay, rubber stamp. Now, the ballot papers is known. You know who the candidates are and so on. And really, if anybody wants to, they can always print their own ballot papers. No problem. What makes a ballot paper official is the rubber stamp. Every ballot paper have to be stamped with a rubber stamp. And this rubber stamp, the pattern changes with every election. Okay? The whole idea is that nobody can copy this rubber stamp. And every Saloran will have his own rubber stamp and it will be a unique number. And in this example, let's say it's UP0530. So every ballot paper in my Saloran must have UP0530. 
if I see a ballot paper with UP0531, then I know that it's not from my salo run. Okay. <clears throat> How did the, the rubber stamp get there? In the morning, all the KTMs meet with um, KTM number one having a black bag with all the rubber stamps inside. And all the KTMs one by one will put their hand in and will drop the rubber stamp. So, in theory, nobody knows which rubber stamp goes to which Saloran until that point. Okay? So, they will then take this rubber stamp, okay, and they will then stamp onto this form, Form 753. Now, you've got your own Form 753. You can ask them to stamp on your Form 753. But sometimes they may not want to give, okay? Uh, because it's not specifically, you know, required for them to stamp. If they don't stamp on your 753, no problem, not an issue. Just take a note on that serial number UP0530 and note it down, okay? This needs to be informed to your accounting agent so that your accounting agent would know this is the serial number to look out for, okay? Please, whatever that you do, do not text or communicate to anybody what this serial number is. Because if this serial number leaks out, and remember this is a fourth provision in the, in the red form that I was talking about. So this is prohibited by the red form, what you signed. If you let anyone know what a serial number is, and that person already have pre-ready printed their, their, their ballot papers, okay, Rubber stamp, how long does it take to make a rubber stamp? Less than half an hour. And happy days, I'm away stamping on all my ballot papers already printed out and I got official ballot papers. I'm creating my own official ballot papers. So do not communicate this serial number to anybody. Then you've got a ballot box. The ballot box is shown to, the KTM will show that it's empty to whoever who's present and willing. Now this is the wordings in the act, it says, Sorry, wordings in the regulation, it says to whoever who is present and willing. So it means that if you're not present, they will just show it to whoever who's present. If you're present and not willing, they will show it to whoever who's willing. You are not mandatory for the elections. If you're not there, the elections will just go on. Okay? Once everyone is satisfied that the ballot box is empty, they will then close it down and they will then seal it. They can, they have, um, uh, depending on the ballot box, they've got different options of how they seal it. They can use a plastic tie, all right, um, though, or they can be using that mouse tail, which is aluminium, or in this example, they just use a cloth, uh, the, the cloth ribbon, okay? So that is a bit easier, a bit uh, less messy. Uh, and then there is a seal, that's the yellow seal, that's the SPR seal. Now, the regulation says that you're supposed to um, sign, you're allowed to sign your name on a seal. So, the KTM and the Pacha will then sign onto the seal. But you look at that seal, it's a very, very small seal. It's very difficult to go and sign on it. Okay, and the rule says that you cannot touch the ballot box. So, it's a bit of, uh, you know, difficult thing to try and sign on it. And, and this seal is not a very effective seal because you can see, you can just pull it off quite easily. So, but this is what was brought in for GE14. <clears throat> so I think that's what they're going to be using. Okay, the issues I've already mentioned, all this, I'll just move on. All right, so now eight o'clock, it starts. The voter can now come in. They'll go to crime number one they go to crane number two, they go to the crane number three, and then they go behind the screen in the polling booth, they mark their ballot papers, they put it into the ballot box, and then they walk out. Next to the ballot box, there's a crane number four. You sit on the right-hand side, you are the closest, other than crane number four, you're the closest to the ballot box, but you're not within touching distance. Okay? The KTM will sit in the opposite end of the room to the, to the crane. Okay. This is the flow if there's only one, um, one door, which could be 
if it's a uh, day one kampung, uh, the day one in the kampung or the longhouse. This is a basic flow on uh, election day. Okay, so I will go through in, in detail. All right. First of all, the voter comes in with uh, identity documents. Which identity documents? The law says that it must be a document that's issued, officially issued by a government department, carries your name, IC number, and photograph. So your my card complies with it. So generally, everyone uses my card, but or the Tantra card or the police card. Okay, but you can also use an international passport. You can also use a driving license. Now, there are issues. They have not updated the um, the the regulations. Okay. Now, if you remember, some of you may remember that we used to have this thing called a temporary IC. That's a KP eleven, KP nine. Sorry, the KP nine. Now, because a long time ago, it takes three months to issue a new IC. Now it takes thirty minutes. So. What it, you used to have to do is, when you lose your IC, you go to the police station, you make a police report, then they'll give you a receipt, okay, a special receipt, to say that you make a police report about the loss of your IC. And then you go to JPN, and JPN will take three months to issue you with a proper uh, my card. And so that's why they will issue you with a temporary IC, which is a, based on paper. The temporary IC carries a photograph. The receipt does not. Today, you no longer need to do that. You don't need to make a police report in order to, um, to, to, if you lose your IC and your IC, your my card can be, will be, can be issued within 30 minutes. I have my my card, replacement my card issued within 30 minutes before, so I know. All right. So, if that's the case, but unfortunately, the KP9, KP11, the temporary IC and the police receipt is still there in the regulations. So if somebody were to walk in with a KP11, all right, having made a police report about the loss of the IC and now have got a receipt, to me is high and use that receipt in order to cast a ballot, to me is highly suspicious. Because why do you um, why are you making a police report when you don't need to make a police report anymore? All right. And a driving license, if you drove your car, you would have a driving license anyway. So you cannot stop it because the regulations allow it. So you just have to note it down. Okay. The other thing that I'm a bit upset with is that, uh, and this only came out in the last election, GE14. It was not there in GE13. Okay is that somebody then had this bright idea that, you know, you know that the uh, access card that the uh, uh, departments issue for you to go through the door, those access cards? Yeah, in a government department, it complies with all the requirements for edited document in the SPR. It is issued formally by a government department. It contains your name, your IC number, and your photograph. So it can be used as well. Now, that is really nonsensical, okay? To me, if anybody would to not use your IC or driving license and use this access card in order to cast your ballot, something is very funny. So please note it down. Again, if they insist on it, you know, the KTM can allow it, you know, um, but if that happens, then you note it down, okay? Report it in immediately. If they start to see, if we start to see that it's a pattern emerging, we may have to take action with the arrow. Okay. So it goes to crime number one. The crime number one will check the voters' fingers is not marked with ink. Okay. So it's satisfied that it's not marked with ink. Then they will verify the identity of the voter from the identity documents from the my card, and they will read out the name I see uh, um, from the electoral roll. Okay, they have to look at the voter in if they were to verify the identity of the voter. Okay, so, but unfortunately, there are some civil servants who will just put their heads, some crannies who will just put their heads down and will not look up. 
If that's the case, put up your hands. Tuan KTM boleh saya minta kerana nombor satu pandang ke muka pengundi untuk mengenal pasti pengundi. Okay. Then they are supposed to read okay, the name, the IC number and the voter, voter number from the electoral roll. The, it's interesting, the Malay version of regulation says meneriak nama. So you're supposed to shout it out so that everyone in the room can hear. And then everybody, that means current number one, and all the pachas will then cancel off, use your pen and ruler and cancel off the name from the electoral roll. Okay? So this is the electoral roll. Okay. So you have got the bilangan, which uh, this is salon number one. All right, so it starts with number one all the way to whatever number it is. And um, and they will read out number bilangan, number sembilan, IC 30102171812583, Hao Tan Hua. So everybody hears Hao Tan Hua, number nine, then they, they cancel off the name. All right, so... <clears throat> Uh, and some of them may actually even um, uh, shout out the muka surat number as well. In this example, you see the the PP, the cancellation of the name PP under PP. So that means that this guy has already come to vote. Okay, he already had the ballot paper um, uh, as a pengundi post. Now, if the guy comes in and says that he is um, Pengundi awal, okay, uh, but on that day he was busy and he couldn't couldn't um, go to do the elections, all right, and he's asking for a ballot paper. No, that's not allowed, okay. So if you if you are already a pengundi awal, you are registered as pengundi awal. That's it. Whether you voted or not voted, you're not allowed to take a ballot paper on election day. So they are not allowed to full stop. Okay. Next, using the ink. The crane numbers two, crane the, the crane number two, will check that uh, the voters' uh, four fingers and so on are not uh, doesn't have ink, and then they will dip the finger into the ink. Now this is different from the first time when we when we had um, the ink at the elections, which is a GE GE thirteen. Um, where they use a brush and they brush the finger, okay? GE14, they've changed the, um, the SOP so that they will, they will dip the finger until the very first joint. Which finger? It will be the left hand forefinger, the index finger. If you don't have an index finger in the left hand, then your left hand, um, um, upper two, your other fingers, which is your ring finger, your uh, middle finger, and your little finger. They, they can use a thumb as well if they, if they want to, but normally they don't. Okay? If you've got no fingers in your left hand, then you go on to the right hand. Index finger first, and if not, then middle finger, ring finger, and little finger. Okay? If you're a thief from planta, and you got no fingers at all. Then what they will do is that they will they will use a brush and they will brush the stump of your arm, your left arm. Okay? So that means the, the brush is still there, but it is only used for people with no fingers. Okay? So um, so if you were to see uh, uh, a crane number two using the brush on the finger, you got to stop it and say that no, that's not the SOP. The SOP is that they're supposed to dip. And the brush is only used for people who've got no hands. Okay? Um, very basic principle. If there is no... If uh, you don't mark the finger, you don't allow the ink to mark the finger, then you cannot have a ballot paper. Okay? Then next, so this is the... The finger marking. Then next, you go to crane number three. Now, crane number three has got one job, very simple job. The job is to stamp the ballot paper with a rubber stamp and then tag and then give. 
stamp their ringgit. That's it. Now, there are normally two issues with regards to this. Um, sorry, yeah. Um, before I go on to that, um, where do they stamp? They just need to stamp right in the middle, partly on the ballot paper, partly on the counterfoil. So they cannot have the whole stamp on the counterfoil or the whole stamp on a ballot paper or, you know, one stamp wholly on the ballot paper, one stamp wholly on the counterfoil. It must be a single stamp that is at least a part of it. It doesn't matter how much, at least a part of it is on the counterfoil, at least a part of it is on the on the ballot paper. Okay. Um, the, there are two issues. The first issue is that they normally would not be stamping one at a time. Okay, to make like, I would prefer that they stamp one at a time. But what they want to do sometimes is to make life easier for themselves. They stamp one whole book at one go. If they do that, okay, you ask them, can you please not do that and just stamp one at a time? Okay, because if they stamp all at one go, then of course it makes it, sorry, makes it easy for you, for, for, for the cranny to give two ballot papers to one person. Okay. <clears throat> but if there is, uh, so you ask, but sometimes they don't want to do it. Okay, they still want to stamp. Okay, you just have to watch it a bit more carefully. That's all. Um, but at 4.30 before closing, they want to stamp one whole book. I would normally say, no, please step in. Try and persuade them from doing it. Because what you don't want is at 5 o'clock when the ballot closes, okay, balloting closes, you have got leftover ballot papers which is stamped but not given to the voter. Ballot papers which is stamped and not given to the voter floating around in the room is high risk. And at five o'clock, you actually have that, then you act, You will have to very quickly tell the, uh, the, 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 the KTM to cancel those ballot papers, all right? Ballot papers which is um, torn or dirty, you may, uh, as a voter, you can ask for replacement. In fact, the regulations, the SOP even allows you to ask for the replacement if you you could actually even tell the KTM. For KTM, saya sudah salah pangkah lah. Boleh saya dapat kertas undi yang baru. That is allowed as long as the KTM is satisfied that your sins is a sincere error and you didn't do it on purpose. Okay, when they, if they give you a replacement, then what they have to do is they've got to tear up the old ballot paper and uh, cancel it, all right? So they will stamp on it, the batal, and then they will tear it up, and then they will put it into an envelope under the desk, okay? And they will note it, note it down that they have, uh, they have, uh, this is an undi, kertas undi rosa. This is different from Undi Rosa. Eh? This is a Kertas Undi Rosa. Make sure that uh, they cancel it first before they issue a new one. All right, so you'll be issued ballot papers unless you only have uh, Sabah and Sarawak will get only one ballot paper because uh, now especially, I think Sabah will, may not dissolve, okay, if national dissolve. Uh, of course, federal territory will only get one, paper, one, one ballot paper. This is how you stamp. Issues regarding the ballot papers. This is, this two I've already mentioned. Oh, one more issue. I forgot to mention it. All right. Um, the job of crane number three is to stamp, tear, and give. Stamp, tear, and give. Does he need a pen? No, he doesn't need a pen. And he cannot have a pen. All right. And that's a very important point. Crane number three is um, list of equipment does not include a pen. So you have to make sure that crane number three do not have a pen. Because there's no reason for crane number three to try and write anything. Okay, so which is one of the issues because it is a very uh, mindset of a civil servant. If they are going to be bureaucratic about things that they want to, they find it hard to give you something without recording it down. 
So sometimes they feel that they need to record it down and they write down the IC number on the counterfoil or whatever it is. Okay, so don't allow that. Very, it does happen sometimes, but it's normally you know bad training. Okay, so training number three cannot have a pen. Okay, a few non issues. First of all, um, you cannot verify the identity of the voter. That's not your job. You do not have that role. So you cannot get up from your seat and walk over and stand behind crime number, crime number one if you think crime number one isn't doing the job properly. Okay? Raise up your hand. Speak to the KTM about that particular issue you feel uncomfortable that you want to go and verify the, the voter. If that's the case, then you and the KTM will normally go together. Okay? Um, so, but you cannot get up and stand up by yourself and straight away go. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, if you were to stand up... <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. If you, were to, <coughs> if you were to stand up, then you should actually ask permission first before you stand up. Okay? You are not... <coughs> Part of the process. <coughs> Sorry, can I just take a break? I'm going to get some water. Okay, yeah, so sorry about that, that break. Um, so next is dirty and damaged ballot papers, I can mention. Um, uh, you can request a replacement, but the SOP is that the KTM has been told that you can only replace the ballot paper once for each voter, okay, because there are concerns over insufficient. Then this is one of the things about a civil servant is one of the things they hate most is they are not able to finish their work. So they don't want to run out of ballot papers. So sometimes they may refuse to issue a new ballot paper if it's just slightly smudged. So if that's the case, then with the permission of the KTM, talk to the voter and say that uh, you are you are a pacha, you will ensure that the vote that that ballot paper is going to be counted, okay? So do you you reassure them? So that way, hopefully, they will they will be okay about it. Randomizing ballot papers. The last election, you know, this is a problem with social media. You got people who don't understand things, and then they become an expert, you know, because and then they start to spread everything all over the internet, and everybody got very very confused. So the last GE, I had to send word around to all my pachas and say, please do not follow whatever you hear on social media unless I have issued it. Okay. And one of the things I went around is that telling people, don't uh, randomize your ballot paper. Don't take the one that is given to you. Ask for one in the middle because they don't trust the SPR. No, you can't do that. Okay, you just can't do that because then the whole Form 13 will go out of whack if you do that. Okay? Right, and the stamping the ballot paper, there was a big debate about it at the last election. All right, variation to the roles. So the cranny, there could be a fourth cranny and the fourth cranny's job is to stand next to the ballot box with a ruler and every time somebody puts a ballot paper in there, they just to choke and make sure it goes into the box, okay? Um, sometimes they have only three crannies, in which case uh, there's no crannies number four. Sometimes there's only two crannies, 
and uh, the and if that's the case, then credit number two and number three will be combined into one job. Okay. If there's a heavy queue, then credit number two may assist credit number one, and so then you end up with two queues. Okay. The roles may rotate during the day. Now, here you got to have some sympathy. All right. You have got a duty roster. You have got a replacement during the day. Or if you are the only pacha in the room in, for that sub run, then you are able, you're still able to pop out and have a rest in the middle of the day. The Kranis and the KTM do not have, especially the Kranis, do not have a chance to stop. The election do not stop for a lunch break. Lunchtime, the election will still go on. So what these Kranis will do is that they will pop out very quickly and and have their lunch and uh, because their friend, their colleague is waiting inside to come out to have their lunch. So have some sympathy for these people. Okay, so when one of them pops up and if let's say there are only three crannies left, then they will combine the rows of two and three, all right? Or sometimes one and two. They cannot combine one and three because crane number three is not allowed to have a pen. All right, voter turnout. So depending on the instructions that you get from your election agent, you may be asked to keep uh, track of the hourly turnout. The, the KTM will also be doing that and they will then inform the police officer to report, to text it in, uh, how many people turned out for that salary run. All right. Um, okay. Now, there are three forms that you need to know. <clears throat> Form 10A. This is where the KTM refused to issue the ballot paper. The KTM has a right to issue the ballot, uh, refuse to issue the ballot paper. In f there are four situations mentioned in the SOP. The first one is that the voter refused to show finger. You refuse to show your finger, we cannot verify you whether you voted or not, you cannot get a ballot paper. Or you show the finger and it's already been marked. Or the voter refused to allow the finger to be marked. Okay, or the voter's name on the electoral road is already been cancelled, which means they already come. Okay, so if that's the case, then the KTM may refuse to give the ballot paper, but the KTM cannot simply just like that refuse to give the ballot paper. They have to go through a process and they fill in a Form 10A. In a Form 10A, they say that me as a KTM for this salary run, refuse to give this particular voter, IC number this, a ballot paper because of this reason A, B, C, D. And they signs it. And the Saksi also signs. Who's the Saksi? You. Okay, so if you agree with the KTM that this is a valid reason why he shouldn't be given a ballot paper, then, you know, you help him by signing as a Saksi. OKU and blind voters. So you think about it. You know, how does an OKU and blind voter vote? Because the principle is that only the voter is allowed behind the screen. Okay? So, if you're okay, you, you may not be able to go behind the screen yourself. Now, for the purposes of this, this uh, uh, provision here, for the purposes of this form, okay, you means that those who are physically not able to vote by themselves. That means if you are deaf, you can still vote. If you are deaf, you can still vote and um, uh, so for this purpose, you're not an OKU, all right? So it doesn't need to have an OKU card for you to be an OKU for the purposes of this form. Now, so if you have got a wheelchair or you, have, um, you are blind, then you can get an assistant to help you to vote. The assistant must be a citizen, 21 years and above, okay? And the assistant is the one who's got to sign the form. And this is a form, Form 10. Form 10. It's a declaration by the assistant, okay, that they are above 21 years old and uh, they are citizens of Malaysia and they, they are going to be helping so-and-so to, to vote, all right? And then they sign and the KTM will sign. This must be done in the presence of the voter. So you cannot have a situation where somebody turns out and says that, uh, my father is at home, he cannot come in to vote today, here's the Form 10. 
No, you cannot. Right? No, that. The problem is when there's no form 10. Okay? So, when you think about it, which saloran requires the most assistance? It's saloran number one, where there are all the oldest people there. And uh, so you'll see that saloran number one, the KTM is extra helpful. They will come in, they will help you, they will take you behind the screen and they help you mark your ballot paper. Okay? Try not to let them do it. Because remember what I told you? KTM in saloran number one is very often a BN supporter. So if you see that these are uh, these voters are your supporters. You are in a in your your salary number one is in your stronghold, and you're very likely going to be voting for your candidate. Then you try to tell the KTM, "Don KTM, boleh saya bantu? Saya boleh isi borang So that you will be the one to help the voter by going behind the screen. But don't forget, don't ignore your other duties. So you got to make a judgment call on this one. Whether it's more important to help that particular voter to keep the KTM away from that voter or you need to keep an eye on the other things that's going on. Okay. Doubtful identity. Doubtful identity uh, happens in three situations under the SOP. One is that the voter refused to um, remove the PUDA. Okay. They want to be fully covered so you cannot verify identity. There's a name change due to a change of religion. So, and that's not reflected, let's say, in the IC, uh, more likely in the, um, in the electoral vote, okay? Or thirdly, there's a change to the physical appearance because of surgery. So in that situation, okay, the KTM will then ask the, the, the voter to fill in the Form 11, okay? So the Form 11 is a declaration by the voter that they are a proper citizen of Malaysia who is entitled to a ballot paper, okay? Now, <clears throat> there is one more situation of uh, doubtful identity, which I think most of us will be more interested in, okay? That you only want Malaysian citizens to vote. Like we always say, you got to make sure that the right CIMB turns up to vote. Who's the right CIMB? The Chinese, Indian, Malay, Boim Putra. Okay, you don't allow the wrong CIMB to come and vote. Who's the wrong CIMB? The wrong CIMB, CIMB is Cambodian, Indonesian, Myanmaris, Bangladeshis. Okay, so if the wrong CIMB turns up to vote and you look at it and you say, this guy is obviously not a Malaysian, don't know how to sing the garaku and so on, you cannot stop the vote, unfortunately. That's what the law is. The law says that if the guy's name is on the ballot paper, he's entitled to, sorry, if the guy's name is on the electoral roll, he's entitled to the ballot paper. <clears throat> okay, so you cannot stop him. I mean, just imagine, if you can stop the, the fellow from getting a ballot paper, then the other pacha will start to stop your, your supporters from getting a ballot paper as well. You can't do that. Okay. But what you can do is you can talk to the KTM and say it's one KTM nampak macam pengundi ini bukan warga negara. Okay. Lebih baik tuan KTM lindungi diri minta minta pengundi isi borang sebelas. Lindungi diri is not a magic word with civil servants. Okay. So then with the permission of the KTM you speak to the voter and you say Ini surat sumpah. Kalau kamu bohong, kamu masuk penjara. Because if you look at it, you will see on the top right hand corner of the form, cukai stem dikecualikan. Why does it say that? Because this is the same commission, uh, the same oath that you were signed in front of the commissioner of oath, and you gotta pay a stamp duty for it. But for election, of course, you don't have to uh, pay a stamp duty. So it means to say that this is this is a court oath. This is as good as an evidence in a court. And so that means if you were to lie on it, there's perjury, you go to jail. So you tell the, the voter, kalau kamu bohong, kamu masuk penjara. That's about as much as you can do that about, hopefully that will frighten them off. Okay? If they are, they are uh, not a real voter, not a real uh, Malaysian citizen, 
the 200 ringgit, they may decide the 200 ringgit is not worth it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to skip this one. This this doesn't happen that often. Okay, then the voter goes behind the, the screen and to cast the vote. Okay, now this screen I don't particularly like. Now, first of all, you look at it behind the, 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 the windows behind. Can you see? The windows are open. Anyone standing outside can see who, what, uh, which candidate you're marking. All right? This, this screen, I don't like. This screen is a bit too tall, all right? The last, previously in uh, uh, the earlier GEs, in the earlier GEs, the screen is just half the height. So you cannot see the ballot paper, but you can, um, you can still see the voter. Now, the voter is a bit short, disappears behind the screen. So you gotta keep an eye on the voter. If the voter takes a very long time behind the screen, one KTM, Pengundi itu ambil masa lama di belakang screen, mungkin dia kena ada bantuan. Put it nicely. Don't accuse anybody of anything. If from behind the screen you hear, chuk, chuk, what is that? That is somebody taking photograph. So you got to raise it with a KTM. And the KTM uh, happens before. The KTM will then ask to look at the photo, uh, ask to look at the handphone of the, of the water. And then if they see a photograph there of the ballot paper, they will ask to, to delete the photograph before they can leave the, the room, okay? Your vote is secret, okay? So prohibitions, I think it's all very straightforward. I will just leave, leave you to read it yourself. So, so your job is to ensure that all the processes are followed. You're only the observer. You ensure all the secrecy provision are followed. You mark off the name of the electoral roll. You collect all the Form 10 and 11 that you're entitled to. Form 10A, you may not get a copy, but you 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 note it down that the one was issued. If there's any infringement, put up your hands nicely and raise it politely. KTM's decision is final. If you're not satisfied, you can issue uh, uh, objection letter. Okay? Shift. Your shift can be two hours to six hours long, uh, depending on on the um, availability of pachas. Okay, so uh, normally polling is from eight a.m. to five p.m. except for some very rural areas, and that today I don't think there's any more shortened uh, voting places in Peninsula in Sabah Sarawak. They are still places where it stops at 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock or whatever, okay? Every shift by law under the regulation is minimum of two hours. What it means by minimum of two hours is that if you were to leave the room less than two hours, the KTM has a right not to allow you a replacement, okay? So if you're not feeling well and there is replacement there, then you don't go in. Okay, you don't go in. You tell uh, so. Let your station master uh, put in um, um, have another person in. Okay, rather than you take the risk and you you go in and then um, then you have to leave after half an hour. That means for one and a half hours. I don't have somebody in the room, okay? Every election, I will have at least one KTM who will misunderstand and ask the, the Pacha um, to leave the room after two hours, okay? Um, this is not correct. And if that's happened, then you have to explain to the KTM that the regulation says at least two hours, not at two hours. At the end of the shift, you hand over, you don't say, oh, two o'clock, that's the end of my shift, I'm going to go. You wait until your replacement comes in, you hand over your pacha kit, you brief your pacha kit on all, uh, your, your sorry, your replacement pacha on all the things that have been happening. Just now, there was a photo who came in and this and this and this happened. Explain to your replacement, uh, this KTM, don't like this, don't like that, and so on. Okay, so whatever that you know, you 
you pass it over to your replacement. You wait until your replacement um, is okay in the, in at the stairs, then only you go off. If you're coming back for um, for a subsequent shift, and the KTM does not allow you to take the ping form, remind you, remind the K, let the KTM know that you're coming back. Okay, so that otherwise it will be asking you with a ping form again. Um, this one, age of COVID, I gonna skip it because it may not happen, right? It looks like it will not be happening this this time around. But I think the sanitization and so on will still be there. Okay, close at polling. Polling closes at five p.m. sharp. So the regulation uh, is that those who have been issued a ballot paper will be allowed to cast a ballot. All right, which means technically speaking. If your finger is already marked, but you have you have done with cran number two, but you haven't reached cran number three, and then five o'clock happens, then you cannot vote, even though your finger is marked. Okay, so but generally, what happens is that um, the KTM will tell the people lining up outside the room, chapa chapa maso saya mau tutup pintu. So you take a look. If those guys don't look like your supporters, then you raise your hand, tuan KTM. Tidak boleh jam lima kena tutup. But if those fellas look like your supporters, then you say Tuan KTM biarlah dia orang masuk. Dia orang datang dari jauh. Okay. Remember that you are there to help your your candidate win the election. All right. <clears throat> the KTM will then inform you when counting will start. So you will um, and what time the counting will start and whether or not is it consecutive or concurrent, which means do they want to count both ballot boxes P and N at the same time, or are they going to count one after another? Generally, a lot of them will say that they want to count consecutively uh, because it's faster and they will want to go home early. But after one whole day of polling, they will then change their mind and they say they will do it con uh, consecutively because they realize how complicated the whole, whole thing is. Okay. So at the close of polling, the first thing you do is that you ask the KTM, cancel any ballot papers that's been stamped but not issued a voter. I already mentioned that. Add up your counts if you got a turnout count and compare with the KTM's Form 720. Make sure that it is more or less there because all these counts is not 100% accurate. One, okay. Um, you, the KTM will then close off the mouth of the ballot paper with the SPR seal. So if you look at a photograph, that, that orange colored one is a SPR seal. Now, the SPR seal, the principle is this. Once you see an SPR seal, you take your black marker pen and you sign on it. You sign on it big, remember, but remember you're not allowed to touch the ballot box. But you sign on it big, you sign on the sticker and on the ballot box. Okay, so that if anybody have any thoughts about wanting to remove the sticker, okay, they will have to be very careful in order to stick it back on, okay. Um, then after that, and if you're allowed to, take a photo, okay. Then after that, the KTM will take the unused ballot paper, the cancelled ballot paper, the counterforce of those ballot paper that has been used, and the electoral roll. They will put it into an uh, envelope, they will stick it with a tape, and then KTM signs and you sign. All right. Again, you sign it big onto the envelope and onto the onto the tape. And then the KTM will fill in the form 13. Now, the form 13, remember, bargain A is filled in in the morning. Bargain B, we will fill in which are the uh, the ballot papers that's been issued, the serial number that's been issued. So, the, so that's why it has to be consecutive. All right. And then they put on the number 425 in this example. Kertas undi yang rosak. So those that have been damaged. Okay, this is not undi rosak. Huh? Un Kertas undi yang rosak. So that's five. Which means to say that you got E, jumlah kertas undi yang patut brother dalam kertas undi, 420. So that's the number that you expect to have when you open the ballot box and count the ballot papers there. KTM will sign and all the pachas will sign one by one. Okay. Every pacha will sign. Now, you can ask for a copy of the Form 13. 
or you can fill in your own form 13 and ask them to sign. They may not do it. The KTM may not do it. The KTM may not issue it a form 13. The KTM may not may not sign your form 13. Okay. Um, previously, because the regulation was silent about the form 13, whether you got a copy or not, it is up to the KTM. It wasn't prohibited. But the last election, G14, they actually sent around a uh, circular to say, do not give the Form 13 to the Pacha. Okay? So, it is unlikely that you're going to get a Form 13. You know, gener uh, if you're very lucky, you'll get one. Signed one. You don't, have, you don't get one, no problem. Not a major issue. You have an empty Form 13 in your Pacha kit. You fill in all these details. Okay? These details are very important. How many... How many ballot papers are there? All right, that should be Yampato brother dan pati undi. So you f you copy it before you sign. They're going to give it to you to sign, and you're going to copy it, and then only you sign. Don't sign and then try to copy it because once you sign, they will take it away from you. All right, and report it to your station master as quickly as possible. How many ballot papers there are? Okay, the four hundred and twenty is a very important number. At all times, keep the ballot box in view, all right? So you may be asked to leave the room because they need to rearrange the furniture because the counting room layout and the, and the polling room layout is different. You try to stay in a room. Tuan KTM boleh saya berdiri di satu sudut, saya tidak akan kacau. Okay? If you have to leave the room, let uh, then ensure that they keep the windows and doors open. We had one story of uh, this girl in uh, uh, Pantai Dalam, sorry, um, Lemba Pantai, which is a targeted area, where she was asked to leave the room. And then according to the story, once she left the room, they closed the do door, locked the door and they closed the windows. The good thing about this girl was that apparently, according to the story, she didn't wait for instructions from her station master. She just banged on the door and make so much noise until they had to let her in. So never let the ballot box out of view. If the KTM wishes to go to for prayers or to go for dinner, fine. Tuan KTM hanya kamu saja yang ada kunci ya, okay? But ask for the windows to be left open. Lock the door, but leave the windows open so that you can keep the box in view. And always bear in mind, you know, in some of this classroom, the wooden partitions at the back can be folded, you know, and you can enter from behind. So you got to watch the other room as well. This doesn't happen in the peninsula, so I don't, I'm, I'm gonna skip this. Um, this also doesn't happen. So this is it, okay, for the polling. Any questions? Any questions, anybody? Nobody got any questions? Okay, this is very unusual that to have a group with no questions at all. All right, um, do you want a break or do you want me to go straight into counting it, counting Counting agent's job. Hello? Do you guys need a break or do you want me to go straight to counting agent? Can do a quick break. Okay. So I give you a five minutes break. Okay. At uh, uh, 10, uh, 10 or 3, I will restart. What time is it now? Yeah. 10 or 3, I will restart. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, I'm going to restart now the counting agents. Um, a lot of the slides for the counting agents are going to be very much the same. So I'm going to skip um, a lot of it. All right. Sorry, and sorry, Jim, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Um, if I remember the previous uh, GE, um, the place that I served as Pacha was different from the place that I voted, right? But is there rules saying that you can Pacha for different states or if let's say someone was from East Malaysia but was living here and already uh, voted early, for example, could they also um, volunteer as a Pacha for the peninsula? Well, um, at the last election, I organized in PJ we trained 1,000 Pachas, okay, of which I took 250 out to elsewhere. I see. So, so uh, and 16 actually followed me to, uh, to Tanom in, uh, in, in Sabah. So I had Pachas, 250 Pachas going out to, to nine locations outside of PJ. Plus, there were quite a number of other, also PJ Pachas who were, who went to places that was not under me. So, yeah, it was quite common. So, we had situations where, obviously, those who went with me to Sabah, all right, they gave up their votes. They, they didn't vote. Uh, but there were also those who voted and then went out, okay? So... They would be nearby places like uh, Bentong, that's just two hours drive away. So they voted in the morning and went straight out to do their pacha, pacha work. So there's no hindrance at all, whether or not you are, um, that you are being a pacha in a place that you're not registered as a voter. I see. They had to give up their vote? It was not possible for them to vote early or? Um... No, you can't. Vote, early voting is only open to those people who are who are have an official government duty on election day all right so uh, so that were covered originally it was only for the SPR people and um, and the police officers and so on but now it's been expanded that even you know uh, immigration and all these officers you know they will they they will be voting they will do early voting but it's only largely for government servants so you and me do not have early voting at all this is not like in europe or us where you know they it is the election laws are supposed to be designed to encourage people and make it easier for them to vote in malaysia the election laws are designed to make it easier for the civil servants to to run the election <laughs> Okay, not it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other questions anybody has? If not, then then I start off. Okay. So all these uh, points, slides you already seen. So concurrent or consecutive, I mentioned it already. Okay. Um, concurrent counting is preferred by the SPR, but is very difficult to do because it is very noisy. You got two teams going on, calling out names at the same time. Okay and you will definitely need two counting agents okay one for p and one for n because it's two separate candidates remember the the pacha represents the candidate not the party okay so if you have got i don't expect it to happen but if ever muda were to put up a candidate for both p and n in the same place then it is two counting agents not one Two pa and two cha. Okay. Um, so, like I said, you know, a lot of them, uh, a lot of these KTMs would want to have concurrent counting. Uh, when you ask them early in the morning before they start, they will say concurrent counting. But then, in the by the end of the day, they will say consecutive counting because they realize that it is difficult. Okay. All right. This is a counting room layout. So instead of um, one small table in the middle of the room, now you've got one big table. If you've got concurrent counting, then it's two big tables, okay? The cranny sits on one side of the table and you sit on the other side of the table. It's a lot more straightforward and the KTM is on, is, is at its normal desk, okay? What you have in the counting room, one or two ballot boxes. 
you have the packet that's really been sealed up, okay, that contains the unused ballot papers, cancelled ballot papers and so on. There's a Form 13 outside of the envelope. And then there's a cranny and a clock. Okay. Safeguard the ballot box, already mentioned, sealed packets, already mentioned. You got a Form 13, which you need a number. Okay, counting procedures. So the first thing is that the KTM will show that all the baskets are empty. How many baskets are there? It is a number of candidates plus two. Plus two is one for Undi Ditola, which is what we normally call Undi Rosa, and Undi Ragu, which is a doubtful. Okay. So they will show that all the baskets are empty. Then they will show that the ballot box is, the seals are intact. If you want, you can take a photograph, okay, before they open the seals. To be very honest, if they allow you to take a photograph, that means the risk of um, is very low, that they are trying to cheat. Okay, if they are trying to cheat, they will not allow you to take a photograph. So if they don't allow you to take a photograph, please report it in because it could be a sign, it could be a sign that there could be a potential fraud coming in. Okay. Um, so once everyone is satisfied that the seals are intact, okay, then the KTM will break the seal, okay, and then they will open up the box and pour the contents onto the table. Now, one thing about um, about the elections in Malaysia is that I've seen videos of counting in places like Africa and Indonesia. In Indonesia, uh the counting takes place under a tree you know so it's transparent anybody who wants to watch can watch right it's um indonesia is a lot more democratic than we are in malaysia no the elections are run for the benefit you know uh, of the civil servants okay to make life easier for the civil servants and the civil servants mentality is i'm doing a job I'm doing my job, you guys don't disturb me. So when you guys don't disturb me, what it means is that they close the doors, they close the windows and they lock the doors so that no one will disturb them. So the consequence of closing the doors and the windows is that it gets hot. And so it means that they got to put on the fan full blast. So when they pour the contents onto the table and the fan is going full blast, your ballot papers very often will start to fly. If the ballot paper start to fly, you don't pick it up. You are not allowed to touch the ballot paper. All right? Because if you are allowed to touch the ballot paper, then the other PN filler can also touch the ballot paper. So you don't. You take a step back and you take a broader view. Keep an eye on every single person in the room and where their hands are. Okay? If you can see that happening, then if you can, if then if you want to help, you can always point out Tuan KTM, Sini ada satu lagi, Sini ada satu lagi. All right. So then they're going to put it all onto uh, the, the table and then they're going to count, okay, whether or not is it equal or less than a Form 13. If it is the same or less than a Form 13, then they update the Form 757. Okay, in this case, it is the same. If ballot papers is more than Form 13, then you have an issue. Now, very often, very, very often, almost all the time, it is a mistake. So either the ballot papers is wrong or the Form 13 is wrong. So ballot papers is wrong, recount all the ballot papers one more time. And most of the time, that is where the, where the mistake is. Okay, they miss out the counting, all right? Or the Form 13 is wrong. If the count is correct, then they check the Form 13. Then to check the Form 13, they will have to break open that envelope with containing all the uh, unused ballot papers and so on, and they reconstruct the Form 13 one more time. Okay? Um, if they reconstruct the Form 13 one more time, then they'll have to, um, very often, they will write, overwrite onto it, and then the initial it gets really messy. So sometimes, they, most of the time, they will just um, uh, do a new Form 13. And then all those ballot papers, spoiled ballot papers, the unused ballot papers, counterfoil and all that, goes back into that envelope and then you uh, seal it with the tape, you sign, KTM sign, okay? Um, 
if after all that both the ballot papers and the form 13 is correct okay then you got a difficulty so ktm will then have to go through all the ballot papers and identify those that doesn't have a valid ktm a uh, valid saloran stamp put it aside okay uh so that could be an issue okay if you want you need to make a police report why uh, if there is a ballot paper from another saloran in your saloran uh, ballot box if all of them has got a valid saloran stamp then to me that is definitely a fraud case definitely a fraud case so at that point that is where they are supposed to take out ballot papers one by one <clears throat> go and look for the counterfoil try and put it back together again and see whether or not that stamped that ballot that stamp is from the same counterfoil or not okay very time consuming and that is where the serial number comes in okay the serial number is not meant to track the 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 voter it is meant to look for the the counterfoil when you in this very 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 rare occurrence okay there's no step after this because after that you know you should be able to identify the, the culprit which ballot paper is a problem okay then after that you'll be sorting out the ballot papers okay so the the cranny will hold up the ballot paper open up the ballot paper hold it up so that you can all see it okay and then we'll shout out you know muda bn or whatever you sit right in the middle so they can see everything correctly okay so uh if it's uh, uh, a small ballot you know a rejected ballot then they put into undi ditola so so you just have to make sure that they put it into the right basket okay and you maintain your own count now you got to be a bit smart about this don't be like some people who say yes 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 muda that's my ballot paper i like it you know bn do and i don't look at it no if they say muda that is your ballot already happy you just make sure that they put it into the muda basket that's all if they say bn then you look at it even more all right you look at it to see whether or not can you get it spoiled okay or even better can you turn it over to muda all right so you have to be very smart about this and very alert you got to be very opportunistic when it comes to this or accounting okay invalid votes what is an invalid vote is not stamped with a saloran stamp so that is straight away is rejected okay if the vote is given to more than one candidate then of course it's rejected something written or marked on the ballot paper by which the voter can be identified there cannot be anything in the ballot paper that can identify the voter if there is it will be rejected it is not marked or marked in a place other than a correct place it does not clearly indicate the intention of the voter now here is a thing that a lot of people misunderstand a lot of people say you have to mark the ballot paper from corner to corner no you don't have to all right this is not an exercise on how well you can follow instructions this is an exercise to identify who your intention is to be your democratic representative so it is a intention that's the important thing okay whether the intention is clear or not now here are some examples that is from spr this is not my examples these are from spr okay um and so i kept it to the original language and everything this case is not a cross it's a circle and that's accepted here you can see the cross but it's not in the box it's against the name but the intention is clear so it is accepted this one the mark is not clear but when you see it okay the intention is clear so it is accepted here yeah. you got two marks okay but it's for the same vote the uh, same candidate so fine no problem is accepted here they put on the three marks to show that they are a strong voter a strong supporter okay 
yes, it is accepted. Just make sure that you count it as one voter, not three votes, that's all. Here, it is not within the box, not fully within the box, but it didn't cross into any other box, so that one is accepted. Intention is clear. Here, you can see that it's torn, okay? But you can see also very clearly that the tearing does not invalidate the intention of the voter. The voter's intention is very clear. It doesn't hide anything. So this is accepted. So now let's look at those that is detola. This one has got no Saloran stamp. So straight away detola. You don't know where this, this uh, ballot paper comes from. This one has got two marks. One for one candidate, one for another candidate. So detola. But then again, if you look at it, you know, it's really a question of how well you're going to argue this case. For me, it's the first candidate is my candidate, then I say, Tuan KTM, dia mau saya punya calon dah, dia tidak mau yang nombor dua. Okay? So you see whether or not you can argue to get that ballot based on your creativity. Okay? Your job there is to help your candidate win the election. Here, it goes into two boxes. So it's the taller. Right? But then again, it's the first one is mine, Tuan KTM. Dia tidak sengaja lah masuk yang kotak yang lain tu. Biarlah dia kira dia undi. You try and see lah what you can do. Okay, whether you can get away with it. This one, it is outside of the box. It is far away and it's between two candidates. The taller. Right? But then again, if you want to argue, Tuan, dia punya... Dia punya tanda lebih dekat dengan saya punya calon lah. Try it and see whether they can get away with it. Okay. This one, I don't know why people do that. They write it at the back of the ballot paper. You know, I don't know why people do such things. This one, there's a word Ahmad being written there. I don't know who Ahmad is. Is Ahmad the name or the nickname of the candidate? Or is Ahmad the name of the voter? I don't know. But whatever it is, it is a mark that the person can then say, if you open a ballot box, you see the name Ahmad in there. That is my ballot paper. Please get, let me have my 200 ringgit. Okay? So you cannot allow that. Here they draw a, a, a house, not allowed. Okay? Here Panipu or whatever that they want to say, that is not accepted. Here... I find this a bit interesting, okay, because this was not in the guidance in from SPR in G13, but it's in the guidance for G14. So I presume that somebody did write I love you in a G13 ballot paper, and uh, so they, they, they took it up as an example. This one, it is the Koya, okay, and the issue is that it separated off the, the serial number from the, from the mark, okay. From the cross so it is is rejected but then again i can always argue Tuan ktm dia tidak sengaja lah takkan dia koyak kota sudi dan taruh dalam kota peti undi dia tidak sengaja mungkin kota sini dikoyak bila ran itu cucuk dengan pembaris you try your luck okay if that's your candidate you may get another vote this one why would people, maybe they don't trust the, 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 um, the SPR tracking, using the serial number to crack the, crack the votes, but that is not allowed. Okay, so that's the Tola. This one, if you can figure out, okay, how to turn it to your candidate, please let me know. Please teach me. I want to learn as well. All right. This one is Kosong. There's no mark. So it's the Tola. So these are all examples that is from um, from uh, SPR. Okay, a copy of these uh, examples will be in your pacha kit. Doubtful basket. So ragu. Now this is in order to avoid uh, everybody fighting over every single um, ballot paper. If you are not sure, you just say ragu, and it will go into the ragu basket. Okay, so this will make the whole sorting a bit faster. So at the end of it, you just make sure that they sort out, they're supposed to go through the ragu basket one by one, and then at the end of it, show to you that it's empty. Okay, 
I had one situation where there was this girl, um, she's not my pacha. I was attending a feedback session from, for someone else's pacha. And this girl was asking, you know, they took the ragu basket and they pour it into the bien basket. Is that allowed? Uh, you know, and I was, we were all just, I was shocked that this girl actually came back from the election and asked this sort of question. Shouldn't it be obvious? All right. Please don't allow them to do that. Okay. Please watch out for candidates, especially um, uh, those that went to the other the other side. Okay. Um, you have to be at peak alertness. The sorting will take place, take about 30 to 45 minutes. So you just have to make sure that you are at peak alertness at that point. Okay. Um, make sure that the ballot paper is going to write tray. Make sure that um, that uh, you keep your count. Okay, I had one K uh, one pacha who was so trusted by the KTM the, because we got such a good relationship that uh, the moment the the pacha says no, my count is different from the from the from the krani. Straight away they asked for to re do a recount. Okay, if you got any issue, again, same thing, you raise your hand and ask politely. Okay, step three is counting the votes. Okay, the, uh, the, the clerk will then count the votes loudly, one, two, satu, dua, tiga, okay, and uh, until 10, and 10, then they will punch it into, they put a rubber band, and then from 10 into hundreds. Okay, so, you keep your own count and uh, every time there's a count okay they will fill in a form 764 all right every time there's a count now recount the rule is that if the difference between the first and the second candidate is four percent or less then you can ask for a recount okay so a lot of people say if you got if you lose your salary by less than 4%, automatically you ask for a recount. No. Your job is not to win a salary. If you can win a salary, great, but that's not your job. Your job is to send as many votes as possible to the telling center from your salary. So you have to ask yourself the question, can I get more votes if I recount or not? Okay. Can I get more votes if I recount? Now, how do you know that you're going to get more votes. You look at the Undi Raku. If you have won every single, you're so good that you won every single one of the Undi Raku, then you don't ask for a recount because you can only lose votes. Okay? But if you've lost every single one of the Undi Raku, then you try again and see whether or not, you know, you get one extra vote, you've done, you know, the, the, the recount has been worth it. Okay? You can only ask for a recount only once. KTM can ask for a recount anytime. And the other interesting thing is that it didn't say that you have got to be between the first and second candidate. So if you're a third candidate and the difference is between the first and second is less than 4%, you can ask for a recount. Okay? So after the counts and let's say there's no more recount, okay? And um, then the KTM will then announce who has got how many votes. The moment he announced that, you text your station master as quickly as possible. Okay. And then the KTM will fill in a form 14. Now, the form 14 is very important. I have to emphasize this. I cannot overemphasize this point. The form 14 is the only and final evidence of everything that happened in the silo run that day. Okay. So once the Form 14 is issued, nobody looks at the ballot box anymore. They will not look at the ballot paper anymore. They only look at the Form 14. To look at a ballot box, to reopen the ballot box and look at the ballot paper, you've got to go up to court and petition, do an election petition. Okay? That night, that's all there is. The Form 14 is the only thing. Okay? So it is the very important form. You must get it back. Now, here you got to remember, in the good old days, when this election law was, was set up back in 1953, 
there was no such thing as handphones. There was even no such thing as photocopy machines. So the only evidence was from the Form 14. Okay, so the Form 14 is signed by all the Pachas, all the counting agents, and all the KT and the KTM. So if there are four Pachas, four four counting agents in the room, then they will do five. Okay, um, uh, Form 14. The Form 14, all the five Form 14s will be exactly the same, and all of them will be signed by the KTM and all the counting agents. Okay, and then one will be given to the KTM, and one will be given to each of the uh, four counting agents, because all the five are exactly the same, legally. Under the law, this is the only form that was mentioned in regulation that must be given to the counting agent. So if the KTM refused to give you the counting the, the form 14, that is breaking the law. Okay? So you have to get the form 14. The form 14 is mandatory, not just for the counting agents uh, to be to get it from the from the KTM. But it is also mandatory for you to bring it back to the uh, Bilik Rakan. Okay? If you don't get the Form 14, please don't come back. It is really malu. Alright? So this is what the Form 14 looks like. It's transferred over. The, the, the count numbers transfers over from uh, the 764. Then you check. You check to make sure that the details are all correct. You check to make sure that it is total is equal or less than the Form 13. Follow the order of the candidates on the ballot paper. Okay, It's not to say that if you don't follow the order, the Form 14 is invalid. No, it's still valid. But it's just that sometimes the girl who types in uh, at the SPR office, you know, she does not look at the name. She just follow the order. And then if the order is different from the ballot paper, then everything, the, the, the whole thing gets delayed when they try to sort it out later on, okay? Um, Undi di Tola, and then the KTM signs, and all of you will sign, okay? Then after that, um, the ballot, the, the ballot box already have got the, uh, an envelope with all the unused ballot papers, the canceled ballot papers, the counterforce and so on, all sealed up with one. Then all those that has been counted, just been counted, all the valid and the detailed one, all goes into an envelope, sealed with an envelope, and then you see the seal, you sign. Then these two packets are put into the ballot box, okay? And the ballot box is sealed with a tape, and you sign the tape, and the KTM signs the tape. Then there's two more envelopes, also sealed and signed by the KTM and the counting agent, one containing the Form 13 and one containing the Form 14, okay? There's two more packets that's not that important. One that contains all the Form 10, Form 11, and all those sort of things. And then the other one that contains the manuals, okay? So those two will be out uh, also in the... Sorry. All this will be put into the yellow SPR bag. And then the yellow SPR bag will then be taken over to the telling center. What's the telling center? The telling center is the uh, a main hall in the town. Like in our case in PJ, the telling center is civic hall. Okay. <coughs> so they're supposed to hand it over to KTM number one. Every KTM will hand it over to KTM number one and KTM number one brings everything in. Okay. But generally every KTM wants, wants to have the honor of bringing in their own uh, uh, ballot box. So, uh, so this is what they do. Uh, they will bring it over to a telling center one by one. Okay, there's a convoy, and the convoy will be police car, the KTM's car, and then the police car. Sometimes they will all jump into one car. Sometimes, but more often, they will have each KTM will drive their own car because once they hand over the ballot box, they will go home, and they all want to go home early. It's been a long day. All right. So you have to hand over your pacha kit and your vet very valuable form 14 to the station master okay and then then your job ends okay still however your ktm 
may ask you for help because your key, sorry, your KTM pula. Your station master may ask you for help. Your your station master has got two jobs. One is to send a Form 14 to the Blake Rakan and the other one is to follow the convoy um, to the telling center. So they may he may ask you, can you send the Form 14 to the Blake Rakan and I follow the convoy? Or he may say, he will send the Form 14 and you follow the convoy. Okay, so if you follow the convoy, you make sure that you are somebody who is familiar with the, with the route to go to the telling center. Okay, and you make sure that they get there uh, without losing sight of, of, the, of, the, of the convoy. Again, a story from uh, uh, Lamba Pantai. How far is true? I really don't know. I will not say it. I have not verified it. Okay, but apparently what happened was that um, the Pacha followed the convoy and the convoy stopped at the side of the road. And at the side of the road, there is a car that has got a boot already opened. Okay. And, uh, but when they realized that the Pacha's car also stopped, then they just waited for a few minutes and they continued on. So what actually happens there? Well, I don't know. Okay. But if I were them, this is what I would have done. I would have, again, I would have packed with, uh, with the KTM. Lah. So the KTM's Form 14 and my Form 14, the BN Form 14, would be changed. Okay? And the ballot box, of course, also would be changed to reflect the, the, the more favourable Form 14. So then it goes in to the telling centre to the KTM. The KTM will use, the, sorry, to the RO, and the RO will use the, the Form 14 that is from the KTM, okay? Then you said, hey, hold on. My Form 14 is different, but that night it is two against one, okay? The KTM and the BN Form 14 is the same and yours is the one that's different. So you say that there's a fraud, okay? So then you take it to court. The court will then open the ballot box and then they'll find that yours is the one that's different. So I'm not saying that this is what they plan to do, but I'm saying that this is one possibility of how things can happen. All right, counting cannot complete because of floods or whatever it is, earthquake, then um, KTM, uh, sorry, you hand over your all your details over to the station master, station master hand it over to the EA, and the KTM will hand it over to RO, then from that point onwards, it's between the RO and the, and the EA to sort it out. Okay, so that's it. Any question from anybody? Any question, anybody? If none, I know that is a lot here uh, to go through. Okay, I sp sp spoken for two and a half hours, and there are some slides as you can see. I already skipped. Uh, it is not easy. All right, all these things. So what I would suggest is that you go to pick up the slides from my um, from my website, okay, and uh, you read through it. If there's any questions, you can always raise it with uh, whoever your your Pacha coordinator organizer is, and then they will come back to me on it.